the number one offensive line again coming into the year. Special teams, number one special teams last year. I got them the number one special teams again this year. And they've got two very capable quarterbacks in Cade McNamara and J.J. McCarthy. Uh, whoever ends up winning the starting job, and right now it looks like it's going to be McNamara, but uh, they, they're going to do outstanding. They've got tremendous receiving core. This is a very good Michigan team. I actually have Michigan favored in their first 11 games this year. I've got them going 11-0 and when they travel to face Ohio State on the road on November 26th. Hello there and welcome in. That was Phil Steele talking about Michigan going 11 and 0. We get ready to go here in August. Yeah, you get you excited when you get into another month and you're looking ahead and you know that football is not too far away. We're ready to go kick off August and, and get some hype going surrounding the uh, Michigan football team. There is uh, plenty of hype to talk about with this team. And uh, I made a list of the five most hyped Michigan players heading into camp. That's what we're going to be talking about today. I've got some recruiting notes. So people already, if you're somebody that wants to get in on uh, some feedback, go ahead and leave the feedback and we'll get to it. Antoine already asking uh, any word on the barbecue. Yeah, lots of word. And, you know, one thing for sure that you would know about the barbecue, Antoine, is that if you went to michigan.rivals.com and signed up for the Maize and Blue Review, which uh, I should add is free up until uh, kickoff, you would know everything in detail by the minute with a live thread over the weekend. This guy, that guy, he's in, he's not, he's committing. This is looking good. This is looking great. This is what they, I mean, it was uh, a blow by blow of uh, what happened in Ann Arbor over the weekend. Uh, but it's okay because uh, there's still time uh, for you to get in there and check all that out. Now, I do appreciate you coming in and watching this uh, video or listening to the podcast uh, on a daily basis. We try to cover the basis, uh, uh, the basics of what's going on with uh, the Michigan football. And today we will hit some of those recruiting notes, uh, but we will jump in on the, uh, the hype train, which is pretty big right now with uh, Michigan. That train's coming. It's time to jump aboard the hype train. If you're a Michigan football fan and without further ado, let's get to the fifth most hyped player in front of camp opening up on Wednesday. Hype trade number five. The fifth most hyped player to me is Mike Morris, number 90, the six foot six, 278 pound defensive end. Yeah. Michigan lost Aiden Hutchinson, who who was down in uh, pads in Allen Park singing uh, Michael Jackson's Billy Jean uh, today. And uh, David Ajabo isn't there. But if you watch Jim Harbaugh heading into spring practice, he said Mike Morris could be the next Aiden Hutchinson. Mike Morris could be the next David Ajabu. The defense is scary good. And the first player that Jim Harbaugh mentioned was number 90, uh, Mike Morris. To me, that's enough to get the, to board the hype train. Michigan needs him to be an impact player. They've got a bunch of different guys there, but right now leading the hype as an outside linebacker defensive end. It's Mike Morris. Let's be honest uh, about that. He comes in at number five on the list. I'll give you a little chance to think about uh, who the top four are as we go to the uh, messages. Antoine asking um, if we've got the scoop on the barbecue. We do. Uh, And and like I said, uh, I I give you, I mean, I could sit here for the next five hours talking about all the different things that transferred, I'm sorry, uh, transpired at the barbecue. 
I'll give you some Reader's Digest uh, notes on what happened. Uh, Adrian, he's already tickle in the twine a little bit. This was one of the uh, to me big developments. Uh, you know, is it the biggest development? Okay, I think it is. Adrian uh, asking about uh, Jaden Davis, hoping that he had uh, a great time at the barbecue. Travis uh, talking about a big commitment. We're going to get to that coming up. Travis indicating that Michigan is now ranked ahead of Michigan State in the 23 rankings. That sure didn't take long to close that gap. Yeah, I haven't actually looked. I'll I'll take your word for that, Travis. I know Michigan State over the weekend, both in basketball and football, uh, landed uh, some four and five stars. uh, You know, incredible weekend there for MSU. But this is a Michigan show, so I didn't actually look to see just what the football commitment did for Michigan today. And if it moved him in front of Michigan State, but if that's true, you know, we know it's all about, well, what we know it's about is getting the talent and getting them out there on the field and developing them. But uh, does it matter that they're moving up the rankings? And does it matter that they moved ahead of Michigan State? I'm going to say on August 1st, yes, it does matter. So, you know, Travis, good points on what you're looking at there. Uh, OM indicating that he sees a uh, commitment as well. And we are going to get to that uh, coming up uh, right after we talk about uh, what's going on with the, uh, the hype train. Uh, Logan like the intro. Well, thanks uh, Logan. Uh, I, you know, I've got the intro and I've got the hype train. Uh, going. Antoine, before we go back to uh, hype train number four, which I see coming down the track here, uh, Antoine saying people were tripping about the recruiting. Michigan traditionally re- recruits late, not to mention it's early, and most people that's ahead of Michigan uh, in recruiting have a bunch of three stars. Yeah, look, I, I, because of name, image, and likeness, and because Michigan finished in the top 10 last year, and because Michigan won the Big Ten, uh, there was a thought, and I, I had that thought as well, that uh, why not Michigan a, a top five school this year? Why not uh, when you finally have broken through and won the Big Ten? How about that bump uh, in recruiting? And then when uh, name, image, and likeness, uh, you know, to, to go back to this summer when, when Harbaugh came out and said, no, we're not getting involved in name, image, and likeness, basically is what, it, what uh, I heard when he said Michigan was – not getting involved in the transactions. Uh, you know, you're just coming to, to school at Michigan, and that's going to be transformative. It was like, wait a second, hit the pause button. Let's see what happens here. Now, you had to see how it played out, and you make some good points, Antoine, about uh, Michigan doing things late. And and, and nothing is, uh, you know, th- this is what you do in, you know, uh, in the offseason. You know, you, you look at recruiting, and you, you look at, you know, <laughs> the where it's going, how you think it's going and, you know, and, and then where it ends up, you know, it gives you something to do uh, in the off season. Let's get to um, that hype train because I do hear it coming on down the track. It's picking up steam at number four on the hype train. It is a five-star speaking of recruiting and a local guy, Will Johnson. Will Johnson is listed at 6'3", 190 in the Michigan, uh, on the Michigan website. Defensive back. He's wearing number four in the picture that he has on his Twitter page. But he is uh, elected to, and he has been able to get the number two. Blake Horm has the number two on offense. Will Johnson with the, uh, what would you say, historical number, big time number. Um Charles Woodson's, I guess that's the uh, the best way to say it. Charles Woodson's former number number two as a defensive back. Will Johnson, the hype, is it incredible? Yeah, it is incredible. Oh, Michigan's got two, Jaimon Green and, and uh, DJ Turner. It's a probably starting corners. And, you know, they've got a lot of candidates to, you know, to be a nickel and dime corners and defensive backs. But, you know, safety Line it up as a slot corner anywhere. 
I, I think we're going to see a lot of Will Johnson in the in the preseason. In the preseason, by that the non-conference in those three games, we'll get quite a bit of Will Johnson. Would it surprise the host right here, sitting here right today on August the first, if that by the Big Ten season? which starts officially on September 24th when Michigan hosts Maryland, and then they go October 1st to – so we're talking in two months from today. I like it. August, September, two months for the day is uh, October 1st. They are on the road at Iowa. Would it surprise me if uh, Will Johnson is in the starting lineup against the Hawkeyes? That would not surprise me. Uh, We've heard about Will Johnson for years. When you're a five-star, what comes along with that? The great hype and hype trade number four. Uh, I'll hype them up to say, yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. Now, of course, you know, I don't need to talk about it. This is a hype show. I don't need to say, let's wait and see. And You know, sometimes it takes guys, you know. Uh, and just let's refer back to last season when halfway through the season, you know, he had Jim Harbaugh saying, yeah, Andrew Anthony, you know, he'll – it will be an uh, important part. Uh, uh, Blake, um, I'm not. I'm sorry, not Blake Corum. Uh, Donovan Edwards. You know, maybe we'll see him a little bit more in the second half uh, as well. JJ McCarthy. You know, those guys were true freshmen, and then was by the second half of the season. Although we did see a lot of McCarthy in, uh, I'll say, mop up duty in those first couple games in their playing, and then sprinkled in through the Big Ten. But those other guys, Andrew Anthony, I know he played uh, a little bit the week prior to Michigan State against Northwestern, but he made his mark, really, against uh, Michigan State last year with that 93-yard uh, touchdown. And Donovan Edwards, we may have saw a little bit of him, but he didn't really break out until, what was that, week uh, 11 when they went to Maryland. And um, that was uh, that was a long time before you'd say he looked like a superstar, at least flashed like a superstar. He may have got some snaps before that. But what you say um, – um, flashing like a superstar and getting aboard that uh, hype train. Let's get to some more feedback while we continue to hype up. There it is. Antoine, uh, here's that train coming. Travis taking a guess at the hype train. He's got uh, Mozzie, DJ Turner, Darius Clemens, Kenneth Grant on the hype train. Otis has got Graham and Grant, hidden gems that Michigan got. You know, both of those guys, defense have tackled nose guards, and uh, I know that Grant specifically was uh, talked about. We talked about him him on Thursday and Friday. Uh, Bruce Feldman was talking to Jim Harbaugh, and Harbaugh was, you know, making these, uh, giving the the 40 times and and all of that uh, out for Grant, which was uh, pretty impressive. Adrian's thinking D. Edwards, uh, Otis is thinking that, Will Johnson, at Mr. Johnson, that's true. They flipped four top recruits on signing day. Yeah, you know, the the flipping, it it can happen. Logan guessing that both Johnson and Darius Clemens will be on the hype train. Antoine thinks that Will Johnson played very good in the spring game. He already's got the look. Uh, like he's uh, ready, not surprised by the staff that Michigan has got. He's very confident in him being ready. Yeah, I, I there was a play, and I sat down in you know in front of the the press box down by the ten yard line. So what is that? That is the southwest corner of the end zone. I stayed in the middle, and then I moved down to the southwest corner of the end zone. And there was a play, it may have been a fourth down play, but I think it was a a third and goal. And Will Johnson was joined by, was it Miles Pollard or Kobe Jones? I think it was Pollard, number 24. So you had two true freshmen out there on this third and goal or fourth and goal. And, And both of them just had to look where, you you just uh, you watch the play. I'm right up close, and I see it, and uh, they flashed. I saw, I saw the the fundamentals. I saw everything that you're looking for. Those guys played it like pros. You know, we watch a lot of football, and you know what a corner is supposed to do 
when it is a third or fourth and goal and they're throwing a back shoulder, you know, it, how you're in position, how you turn your head, your hips, the fluidity, all of the things that you look for, probably some other things, you know, that, you know, real um, scouts and things like that, you know, their uh, footwork and all the different things, but you just watch it as a fan and you look over there and you say, you know, those guys look like, these guys look like uh, seniors. You guys look like pros over there playing that, uh, playing that pass. And so, yeah, yeah. Will Johnson, uh, I'm in there. Uh, Will Johnson being six, three is intriguing. Me too. That that's a big for a corner, big rangy corner. One thing I thought about that, Otis, uh, I was looking at rivals had him at six, two, but that is uh, on the Michigan website and spring game that I mentioned. I have the spring football roster. Let me see if the, it checks out. It does. I printed up that roster. Will Johnson, defensive back, six foot three. They got him weighing 190 pounds out of Detroit and Gross Point South. So, yeah, he um, maybe he's all of that at six three. New Dax, and uh, I'll buy that. I am, uh, I am uh, buying that. Let's get to train three. Just coming through. And hype train number three, I have Darius Clemens speaking of the spring game. There's that touchdown. Look, he, he catches the football. Look at the hands. If anybody saw that, I saw it live at the spring game. Down to my left. That throw and that catch, seeing Darius Clemens, is how you get uh, hyped up to number three. Number zero, Darius Clemens, he's listed at six foot three. How about 205? Physically, he passes the test just looking at him. You know, when he was out there running routes at the spring game, I watched a few of the, you know, wide receiver routes, watching him going out. You see the number zero. I looked at him, and he looked to me at first glance, watching him go through some of the just, you know, easy pass routes. They're out there warming up. He, he looked like Braylon Edwards to me out there. And that's a compliment with <laughs> one of the greatest Michigan wide receivers of all time. He looked like Braylon. And then he caught that touchdown pass. And then they were going to him. Now, the tough part is, is not going to dampen any hype at all about Darius Clemens. But when you, you just think about Ronnie Bell, Cornelius Johnson, Andrell Anthony, Roman Wilson, A.J. Henning, uh, that's five. Sandra still, that's six. So where does Darius Clemens fit in seven? I, I don't know. That's a lot of wide receivers, and that's going to – it could be difficult for him to really make an impact as a wideout because the, the position is so deep. But at times, if you're going to bite, you're going to bite when you're a pup, a freshman. Uh, it, it happens even when you have extremely deep depth charts and you get a great player – or uh, you are a great player. I'm not saying he is yet. I'm just hyping him up. Again, I'm supposed to be just hyping this up. Let it go. Let let the let the uh, let the hype flow. Let the train. Am I climbing aboard the train? I am. That's the hype train for Darius Clemens. Let's do it. I. Ain't he can find a spot. You're good enough. You will find a spot if you are Clemens in this offense. This on paper on August the first, I, I can't hype up the offense enough as a as a side of the ball on paper. This is one of the best Michigan offenses I have ever seen, and it doesn't matter that in 2019 I was saying the same thing about uh, that offense and it didn't materialize. Okay. It, it doesn't always mean that it happens, but sometimes it does with what you have. And when you go through the quarterbacks, the running backs, the wide receivers, the tight ends and the offensive line, what else is there? And you look at the depth and you look at the, look at the proven players and you look at a guy like Ronnie Bell coming back and you look at a freshman like Darius Clemens, who's on the hype train number three, when Michigan's got a half dozen players in front of him, you say there's no way that he could get in front of him. Well, there is a way. If you're uber talented, and he certainly does have 
the hype for that. All right, so let's get there. Uh, OM, the, uh, people are talking about some of the other players on the hype train. So uh, number two is coming down the track, and let's get to him. Donovan Edwards, hype train number two. Six foot, 202 pounds. A lot of hype here with Donovan Edwards. Donovan Edwards in, in, against Maryland had 10 catches for 170, 170 yards and a 77-yard touchdown. And that, I, I would say, he arrived. And then it was Donovan Edwards, like, he just broke, he just broke through. He, he's got this incredible game against Maryland. And I remember Jim Harbaugh after that game. Well, let me back up. Even before the Maryland game, there were times when Jim Harbaugh, you know, they would be talking about practice, and he would say, there's just big splashy plays by by seven. Uh, big, big chunk plays, 50 yarders, just talking about how fall camp was going. Even as a true freshman, it's like he is doing things. And then it was other coaches that would slip it in there saying, yeah, you know, big play. Uh, Donovan Edwards makes big plays uh, every practice. So then you had Harbaugh talking about splashy plays. You had different coaches at different times talking about uh, big plays every practice. And then you had the Maryland game where he went for 170 yards and had the 10 catches. And then he had the Ohio State game. And I don't have the numbers for your Ohio State game, but you remember he just uh, he was he was uh, flaring out for a little running back screen. And, and they threw him the ball. And he just stuck his arm out like at the last second, like, whoop. Man, it looked really easy. Caught it one hand, put it in, tucked it, and then went up the field. And it, it was just the uh, effortlessness, uh, the, like the second nature. It, it just like everything about it was like, this guy is a star already. And then you had the Big Ten Championship game where he just rolled out and then he stopped and then he fired the ball down the field. You know, forget the quarterback competition between McCarthy and uh, McNamara. The best throw last year that was on the money. It, it, it actually wasn't J.J. McCarthy and the ball that he threw all the way across. It wasn't uh, McNamara's 47-yarder. All, all were fantastic. It was Donovan Edwards who threw the perfect pass and got hit while you go back and watch that. You forget about that. They should have called it. Uh, maybe if they, you know, I don't know if the officials were doing. He got um, he got totally hit late. And then uh, totally targeting <laughs> right in his face, targeting guy launched, hit him with a crown of the helmet in his face. And he still was able to complete that long touchdown pass in the big 10 championship game to Roman Wilson. The, the hype train, you would think just for that, but then it was just last week, Jim Harbaugh. You remember what Jim Harbaugh said last week about Donovan Edwards? They just call him exciting. What did he call him? I don't I guess I should have looked this one up too. I think he called him something like super incredible, super, uh, super prospect, super something, super player. It was better. It was better than super player. It was something like he's super incredible. And that bumped him up on the hype train to me. I, I'm aboard. And there, there's been a lot of this. Somebody was telling me, I, I didn't see uh, Joel Klatt uh, called Donovan Edwards as his sleeper Big Ten player of the year. Former Michigan offensive lineman John Jansen was talking about uh, Donovan Edwards uh, as a big time sleeper. Um, I don't know what context that he put it in there. Uh, maybe from Big Ten, all Big Ten, all America, whatever. But that's a knife. Uh, there's the hype. And then Harbaugh joining in on the hype last week. I'm not going to stop this train. I'm jumping aboard the Donovan Edwards train. Now, it doesn't mean I don't like Blake Corum. I love Blake Corum, and I think that Blake Corum, with Michigan football fans, is underrated, and Corum doesn't seem to be like that uh, nationally. You know, he's making all of these lists of top running backs and potential All-Americans and all that. But around here, people are eyeballing Edwards, and, you know, I'm not saying it. But other people are making it sound like this guy's just a superstar. Just add playing time. 
Just give him the ball. And you've got an instant All-American. The hype train is, it's not out of control. It is just rolling down the tracks. And I, I think just people that we're talking about here is uh, it's just something that they see. It, it's just something that you're going to get more Donovan Edwards. And they just, when they talk about him in practice and the things that he's done, like he has just scratched the surface. I think all of the uh, the hype and uh, any projection for Donovan Edwards, I, I don't know if you can have too high of a projection for a guy like this. He, uh, if he is displayed, if I'm just going to be serious about it, if he has displayed one trait where you would say that is elite so far, it is catching the ball and out of the backfield and running with it. He just hasn't uh, done it between the tackles. That doesn't mean he can't. And you know, the uh, the compliment of size that he has here, six foot two oh two. The way the game is going, when you think about whether it's Najee Harris, uh, the the Pittsburgh Steeler running back, or um, uh, Austin Eckler, who's more of a diminutive back, but he catches the ball a lot out of the backfield. Of course, Alvin Kamara. A lot of people look at uh, Kamara and say, you know, that's uh, that's Donovan Edwards. All flattering and all understandable when you talk about a a, a player that is just uber talented and you just can't wait to see him out on the field for uh for Michigan tie saying another Ricky Waters now Ricky Waters for the Eagles and for the 49ers was an incredible running back Ricky running waters I think they have his nickname was or Chris Berman I see that as well, Ty, and that's for uh, so, some old school football fans, I guess. You know, it's been a while since Ricky Waters has played, but I'm with you. Ricky Waters was awesome at catching the ball out of the backfield. And do I think that the comparison to Donovan Edwards is spot on? I do. Antoine loves them both equally. Talking about Edwards and Blake, they are monsters, especially if they're both in the backfield together catching and running. Imagine a linebacker trying to cover them. Laughing emoji. Exactly. I think you can put them both in the backfield. You know, the the hype train with the backfield is that we just don't know who's going to be that short yardage back, who's going to be that goal line back. But when I watch um, Elvin Kamara on the Saints, sure. They put different guys in at different times. But you know how many times they handed it right up the middle? Right be, right off of, uh, right, right in between the tackles, they hand it off to Kamara. They do it. And do I think Blake Corum, who busted out and had that big run, was at the second series against Ohio State last year? That was a play up the middle between the tackles. You know, Hassan Haskins was really good at it. But I, I think that um, – when you talk about short yardage back, you automatically just go to, well, you need a big beefy guy. Maybe it'll be Tavier Dunlap. Maybe it'll be Khalil Mullings. Maybe it will be AJ Henning. Who's the short yardage back. Does it, sometimes it takes, you know, you, you get a guy that just has a little bit of success and the offensive line believes him and everybody else believes in him. And then, you know, that is your guy, but you don't want to tip anything off. But um, it, it is one thing when I just think about the upcoming season, but I I don't know if we're going to have our answers against Colorado state, Hawaii, UConn, or even Maryland. Uh, When you start saying what's Michigan going to do, if they have a fourth and one in the first series at their own 45, who's going to get the ball? Your guess is as good as mine. And you have about five candidates there. Maybe you say, Hey, they'll throw it. They've got five candidates. If they get it down to the goal line, against the Hawkeyes on October the 5th. They got about five candidates with Edwards, Corum, Dunlap, Henning. Heck, I'm missing some of the true freshmen, maybe uh, or C.J. Stokes, who is a, a true freshman for Michigan. Maybe Alex Orgy would be the, um, would be the answer. 
They've got a package where they put orgy in in short yarded situations. You know, McCarthy can run the ball, talking about J.J. McCarthy, but Orgy, go back to the spring game again, Alex Orgy's built like um, like a linebacker or a running back who just happens to be a quarterback and can really throw the ball. So maybe he would be the answer. All legitimate, at least um, when you get to five, six, and seven, and who would be Khalil Mullings. Although Mullings fumbled in the spring game. If you remember when they had him down by the goal line, you know, so at least uh, as I'm speculating until I hear something or see it, I'll put Mullings back a little bit. Ball security. Not going to put him at the front of the line. If uh, from what I've seen from him, you know, the, the one big chance that he had, he put it on the ground. Now we get to number one. And I think it's just the nature of the position. Let's go. Hype train number one, coming down the track. Number nine, J.J. McCartney. There it is. Otis knew it. It's, It's the nature of the position. Everybody gets hyped up about the quarterback. I know a lot of people, you know, if you, if you spend time on social media, you could get a lot of wild, you know, a lot of wild, you know, arguing, you get trolling, you get all back and forth. But even my Michigan fans, you'll, I, I saw one that stuck out over the weekend. There was a guy saying, people that tell you that there's a con- quarterback controversy at Michigan don't know what they're talking about. Uh, McNamara has won over the locker room. Everybody else uh, doesn't know what they're talking about. Well, and, you know, I like this guy, actually, that, that made the tweet. And, you know, I can understand where he's coming from. But when you have a a top 10 type team, Michigan's going to be that preseason. They're top five for me. But uh, I think uh, safely they're going to be a top 10 team. And you are playing two quarterbacks. If you look in the book, what makes for a quarterback controversy? Here it is, right here. Playing two quarterbacks at different times in the game equals quarterback controversy. Number one on the list is playing two quarterbacks in a game when the game is still not decided. That is a quarterback controversy. So Michigan does have a quarterback controversy. It doesn't mean that it's going to be bad. It doesn't mean that it actually is a quarterback rotation because last year, even though they were playing JJ McCarthy, there wasn't a, it wasn't a quarterback controversy. People wanted to make it after Michigan lost the Michigan state game, which is also on the list. Once your starting quarterback loses a game and you're playing the backup, that also gives you a quarterback controversy, but there wasn't much of a controversy last year because JJ McCarthy was only playing in blowouts and then he was just put in, spotted in some in some series. This year, we are all expecting, hoping, that there is going to be more of a quarterback rotation. I don't like it. Michigan has the, the games where they can play around with it, where it's not going to hurt them. I do think that they should settle on who is going to be their main quarterback by October the 1st. But they definitely have a competition. You don't want to call it a controversy because you don't like controversy with your football team. That's understandable. But it's also, you should understand that saying competition, saying controversy, uh, not everybody's, you know, a supreme uh, Michigan follower. And even people that are don't always just uh, don't want to have anything, you know, anything that can be conceived as uh, negative, you know, about the football program, you know, it, or in the team. This is a a competition slash controversy. Now the part where you go back in the in the history of people uh, quarterback play and you see that and, and it's said a lot. If you have two, you don't have one. I don't believe that. I, I think they have they have two that could be ones. 
and they're trying to figure out how they're going to play him. It's the big storyline. You may be tired of it. You may, uh, you know, and everybody has their own opinion on how it's going to play out. I don't need to go over the different scenarios. Every single person that is watching this, all, you know, 60 of you, live as we are in the, the hundreds that'll listen back to it, we all could, uh, we may have as many um, uh, scenarios as the, the lottery, you know, the other night, I actually, it could play out. First series, second series, first quarter, second quarter, alternating quarters. Let's see what happens in the third quarter. Score will dictate it. Play will dictate it. You know, whatever. I know how I would do it. I would try to put a lot of uh, pressure on these guys uh, in practice to have them earn those snaps and those series. I wonder, and uh, I put a call into a former Michigan quarterback uh, last week, and hopefully we get him on this week or next week. But if you if you script plays, and Michigan scripts their first six plays, and Kate McNamara comes out against Colorado State, and the the first five plays call for the first five plays call for running plays, and the six calls for a passing play, and and you're planning on putting McCarthy in in the second series, whatever it could happen, and and McNamara comes out and hands the ball off five times and Michigan goes down the field and scores a touchdown. Hey, great. McCarthy comes in in the second series. It's still scripted that he's going to, th- and he's going to throw the ball. He throws a 50 yard laser down the sideline and Ronnie Bell, like he did last year in the opener comes up with a one handed grab, but then Michigan stalls out in the red zone and has to settle for a, a field goal from Jake Moody who had the better series. Those are things that we uh, will all weigh in on as the uh, season goes along. All right. There is hype train number one. All right. More on the feedback. Uh, Adrian talking about uh, the two running backs. They will be electric. Adrian would love to see AJ Henning in the role as a short yardage situation guy. Antoine says Mullings, Khalil Mullings, would be, uh, you know, could be that guy as uh, the short yardage back. And and since I am sitting here and I am reading it, and Antoine has called him Mullins, it is Mullings. Sometimes it just throws me off. I I thought that I knew his name. Yeah, there's a G in there. That's all right. AJ on the feedback would love to see an orgy. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. (laughs) Let's try that again. Hey, I would love to see orgy Blake and Donovan Edwards in some type of wishbone package. Imagine that. Well, I think you could see. You know, and back in the uh, the eighties and mid eighties and short yarded situations, Michigan uh, did have this recent. I don't know if that's, if that's recent uh, in the eighties, but when Harbaugh played, when Harbaugh played, they did have uh, a wishbone short yardage type uh, a situation. So you could have orgy at the quarterback, or yeah, you could have orgy and. Donovan Edwards and Blake Corum back there in a wishbone type situation, short yardage. I think that could happen. I, uh, I I see what you're saying. Ty thinks that Dunlap will be good enough for the third down and short yardage runs. He might be. He looked good in the spring game. You know, I didn't plan on referencing the spring game so much uh, today, but here I am. Mullings didn't actually fumble. He was stripped trying to reach for the goal line. I wouldn't necessarily call that a fumble. He just needs to be taught more as he is a linebacker. Well, <clears throat> uh, technically, Antoine, whether you're hit blindside and the ball comes out or you are reaching for the goal line, if the ball comes out while you are the carrier, you fumbled it. And whether you you don't want to call for that a fumble uh okay 
Doug Karsh calling in orgy uh, TD will be interesting. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hopefully we see it. And hear it. Yakov, good to see him. In a one-score fourth-quarter game, whoever is playing quarterback is the real quarterback. Well, Yakov, I agree with you, but I will take you back. I don't have the the play-by-play in front of me, and that gets to be the whole thing. I think I need to re-watch the Michigan State game. And and it comes down to, I think it was like right at the beginning of the fourth quarter, but it could have been in the third quarter, so I'm not 100% sure. But Michigan got the ball down to the red zone. And on the first pass, I'm going to say that Cade McNamara had um, took a shot down the near sideline and and had Cornelius Johnson there, but put a little bit too much air under it and, and overshot him. Not a bad idea. You know, first down, hey, he's there. Uh, you'd like to see a little bit more of a catchable pass and give him an opportunity, but he didn't. He kind of was more throwing it away. Didn't like the look. You know, quarterbacks, you, you'd have to talk to Cade exactly what he was looking at there. You know, he may have thrown it exactly how he wanted. Didn't want to give, you know, he had a couple more downs to deal with. So what was the big deal on the second play? McNamara again, went to the air and to the end zone and had like a, um, it was across the field and was looking for something more in the back of the end zone over by the goalpost. I don't remember who the wide receiver was, but again, that one was uh, one that was covered pretty well. Could have put it, on the receiver a little bit more, but opted to like throw it five yards over his head. Very safe play. And it got him the third down. What happened on third down is they brought McCarthy in and he rolled out and fumbled the ball out of bounds. Michigan kicked a field goal. Now the part where this is why I don't like rotating quarterbacks, you know, McNamara's he's out there. I would like to give him the, the three downs. I want to give him the three downs. You know, he a little bit long on this one. Yeah. Throw that one away. Third down, give me my another shot. I've just looked at two plays here. I'm, I'm in, you know, I, I, I've got the, the series. It's my series. I, I, I know what's going on there. I know what play I'm looking for. Oh, wait, Harbaugh's sending the freshman in. In a critical time in, in the big time game. I don't like it. Now I'll have to go back exactly. You could say, hey, McNamara got his bell rung on that play. That's why McCarthy is coming in. I'll have to go back and look exactly. So we may have to strike the last three minutes of me complaining about, uh, but the point still remains. Like, you know, you're in there and in between the series, uh, having the other quarterback in, a lot of that is, uh, you know, something. <laughs> That, you know, you can complain about Josh talking about orgy being in the bottom of the pile. Yeah, well, there's a lot of things that orgy can do that, you know, that can get you excited. And the the first thing that did get you excited about the orgy at the spring game is when orgy was stopped dead in the backfield. And then orgy had three or four on him and then he just like threw them all off and sprung ahead and orgy was able to get that first down. Antoine's reminding everybody that Haskins used to be a linebacker before he turned running back. He is sure that Khalil Mullings can be taught. Now, I'm not against Khalil Mullings as a short yardage guy. I just pointed out that he had a ball security issue in the spring game. I also do remember that he sprung one out uh, and and made a 20 yard run. Look pretty good doing it. So, hey, uh, anything can happen. The punters agrees with Jake Butt that Harbaugh will use the non-conference games like an NFL preseason. Well, I didn't hear exactly what Jake Butt had to say, but I think that the best laid plans, the one thing about a, a uh, an NFL exhibition is that score doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you lose a an NFL exhibition game. You could be in the the second quarter and you're going to be down 20, nothing. And you want to try something and you try it. So, but I get the idea like Michigan can't go into the second half against Hawaii at night and it'd be a 10, seven game and, and treat it like a, an exhibition game. 
But I understand what Jake Butt is saying. You have on paper as we sit here, not, not just three, but you have four games. You have all of September to, to be a double-digit favorite, to get up on these teams, and it, it doesn't matter. And this is the one thing about Harbaugh here. Harbaugh could flip a coin before every snap to decide who he wants to put in there. I don't recommend him doing that. Uh, Harbaugh could pick uh, plays out of a bag in the first four games in Michigan. I don't recommend him doing that either. But, yeah, getting whatever the, the rhyme or reason when, when you have games to work with and you should they should be blowouts, you can it affords you a lot of different things that you could do. And that you can really game plan for uh, they can't say that. But but uh but Butt is right. Did Butt have anything to say about Orgy? Jesse. I always liked when uh Jake Butt was on Isaiah Hole's uh, podcast and they used both of those guys' last names. I always thought that was funny. JJ's role will be similar to last year. Sprinkled in, keep the defense on their toes. He is a talented prospect, but wasn't a five star on any recruiting services. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure on that. You're right about rivals. He was not a five star. And, but I, I think some of the other ones, I don't know. I I, I just look at rivals. Uh, I, I don't look at every single site and compare exactly, you know, the, the star system. He's very, uh, he was a more highly thought of recruit than Kate McNamara. I, I think, you know, for the fans, all of us, you know, it's fine. You know, we're looking at the star system and everything else. I don't think where McCarthy was uh, was rated is going to have anything to do with this year and how they put him in there. I, I don't think that J.J.'s role is going to be similar to last year. I think it's going to be increased, especially in these non-conference games. I mean, the non-conference games, J.J. played a lot last year, but you, you need to crank it up. I mean, you got to, are you giving him a legitimate chance? I mean, here's the thing. You have to, if you, if you don't give him a legitimate chance to win the starting job and you play it like last year and you're trying to just sprinkle him in, well, then he can just be gone. And maybe that's, Hey, uh, if he's going to be gone and people don't like to hear about that and we're trying to hype things up, it's August. You don't want to hear about any of that. He needs to have a legitimate chance to be able to win the job in the non-conference, in training camp, or you are going to see him hit the door. That's going to be part of it. So what you're saying, uh, I'll double back. It may end up being true. They may have him playing a bunch of snaps, and then they may settle on McNamara, and then it may be similar to last year, a little sprinkling, as you talk about. And then Michigan fans... What we know is that the the top storyline to follow through the first three or four games is going to be the quarterback play. Uh, Whoever that quarterback is, it's all fine to me and to you, ultimately, even if we're going to complain about, you know, the are they really putting the best guy in there? Are they really giving him a chance? Are are they mop-up duty? Let's give him some more time. All of these things that could take place over there. If Michigan is winning – and Cade McNamara is playing well, to me, there shouldn't be a controversy. Now, if uh, he doesn't play well and they win, mm, there's a there's a controversy for you. And obviously, if they lose, oh boy. But I'm not projecting that. And either is anybody else out here. All right. <clears throat> Tyler is looking at the betting line for the opener. Michigan favored by 27 and a half. He's going to take him to cover. You know, maybe I'm being led down the, uh, maybe this is just the, I'm on the hype train. Put me in too, Tyler. Michigan minus 27 and a half. I think they're going to get to 50. And I think that they will be able to keep Colorado State out of the end zone. So I'm with you on that. Although, while I do 
I'm trying to think if I've ever bet. I don't think I'm going to be betting on Michigan games. Jesse talking about some rankings, talking about ESPN and some of the other services. Uh, All right. KC, it's always good to see him in. Ty, it's good to put him in. Um, Otis is interested in the defense. He can visualize the offense already. Yeah, well, it's always the thing. You know, Otis, uh, sometimes I spend the day talking about uh, the offense, and then you know what I do? I flip it and start talking about the defense. That's what that's what you do. The hype really is on the offense. The defense, there's, there's questions about you know, how they're going to play it. it I think the, the – uh, the defense should be more interesting uh, in the first couple games. Like the offense, they should be able to score. Um, they should be able to f- score forty points playing anybody that they want. Like again, they could they could pull the names out of the hat, pull the plays out of the hat, and they're going to score forty points in those first four games. Defensively, I don't think they could just pull names out of a hat. You know, they, they've got to use those four games. It's more important uh, for the defense to uh, have it, uh, you know, play out. Andrew doesn't care about recruiting at this point. Otis asking if McCarthy is the fastest player on the team. No, I I don't think McCarthy is the fastest player on the team. If I had to guess, I would say, uh, I would put it between Donovan Edwards, Roman Wilson, Iman Dennis. I'll put those three in there. And then I will look to I'm gonna look to some defensive backs. Do I think that DJ Turner? Do I think um, Will Johnson? I'd have to look at some of those uh, track times when they were in high school. So I'm gonna stay on the offense. And you may say, what about Andrell Anthony? I'm gonna say because Dennis is a track guy. Uh, I think Tyler Morris coming in as a true freshman, you know, might have something to say about that. It's a good question. I'm gonna. Go down to Donovan Edwards and Roman Wilson. That's going to be my guess right now. I will see. Those are good questions for like a uh, like a camp day or something. We get somebody who actually is uh, the fastest. Okay, let's. Um, th- there's the hype train. A lot of people talking about commitments. And the barbecue, and I want to warn everybody, and there's uh, Yakov talking about Evan Link, who we are going to get to. But before we go any further, I want to warn everyone. When we're going to talk about recruiting here, recruiting, if you're not somebody that follows recruiting, it is, uh, it's a real wild ride. If you if you've just get into it, the, uh, the the highest of the highs, but then you are you flat on the bottom. That in the swings, you have to be emotionally stable. If you are not somebody that is emotionally stable, do not follow recruiting. You're going to start following it. You put all of your like uh, um, emotional fandom into some random player with a high ranking one day, and the next thing he is out of there, and you are left empty. With that, I just want to warn everybody that we're going to talk a little bit about recruiting right now. So if you uh, get a little uh, squeamish about things like that, uh, take the next 10 minutes off because we are going to be talking about recruiting. Michigan has landed their 13th verbal commitment, and his name is Evan Link. 6'6", 290. He is out of Gonzaga, Washington, D.C. I thought that was a typo. I had to check it because the Gonzaga that I know, the university, is in the state of Washington, all the way on the other side of the country. So I'm like, Gonzaga, Washington, Gonzaga, do they have this right? The picture on his uh, Twitter feed, he's got the, uh, you you see the the Washington Monument. He's from D.C. Uh, But there he is, uh, three-star, like Yakov indicates. But, like some others, I don't recommend doing this, but there actually are other uh, there are other services 
other than rivals. And they think a little bit more highly of Link. The reason that I've always liked uh, rivals is that some of the other ones, they throw out five and four stars, you know, like they're candy. Oh, you want a five star? Oh, you want a four star? Let's crank it up. Let's crank those stars up. Rivals a little stingier with uh, with handing out their stars. But uh, also something to look at is uh, an offer sheet and what teams are coming after your guy. And in this case, your guy is uh, Evan Link, who committed to Michigan after the barbecue. He did it today. Link was um, also interested in Penn State, Stanford, Whiskey, and Florida State. Two big time schools in there. Excuse me. Wisconsin offensive line, U, Penn State. So, you know, Michigan got a good one here in their 13th uh, verbal, second offensive lineman. Remember, they got uh, Amir Herring way back at the, I think, beginning of July. So, their second offensive lineman. And now they are to number 13 when it comes down to a verbal commitment. Yakov says you should post some grainy video of your playing days. Ooh, I don't know. Like I only played uh, two years of high school football. I am not sure that there is even video of uh, those days. There is a picture in one of the, I didn't get my, I don't think I got my sophomore and maybe even be a freshman, but you know, you go through the yearbook. I don't even know if they have yearbooks anymore, but they, uh, you get the yearbook and you get to, to football and there it is. And they have, I, I did make the yearbook with my, my freshman or sophomore picture. I'm sitting in there. That I think is all I have, but I, I do have a black and white team photo. I'm not sure if that's from a freshman and I've have a few stories. Now I do have some video from, from basketball. I know one of the, the guys still, still talk with, uh, you know, friends from, from basketball for, from high school. And one of the guys, his dad taped, I think all four years, every game. And then one time he'd loan me a VHS tape and then I lost it. So he has all of them except one. I think that was one of my better games too. I don't know. Somebody stole it. They wanted that 50 and hype video where I actually hit a few shots. It would be interesting to put it together just to see what that video would look like. I'll work on that. Ty is predicting more sacks on defense, but less pressures. Hmm. Would I want that? Would I want more? I I guess I would have to uh, uh, tie. That's a, that's a, maybe tomorrow we'll go with uh, predictions. They don't have to be outlandish. Just, uh, you know, you're off the cuff predictions. Not right now. Uh, Tomorrow's show. Uh, Andrew making a prediction that they will be better against the run this year. They were susceptible against the power run teams last year, and they'll have more bodies up front. Well, they certainly were susceptible against Michigan State. Canine still running. They were uh, outmaneuvered on defense by Mel Tucker and company, and they still, they were never able to get Kenneth Walker on the ground. He had five touchdowns. They did stiffen up against uh, uh, Penn State, but um, yeah, the, the the state game stands out uh, defensively. The new recruit came from the same school as Parents Williams on the basketball team. The Terrence Williams. That might be a talk to text type situation. All right, let's uh, let's get you two more on the feedback and Ty did uh, clear it up. Yakov saying offers are certainly important, but not always sure if it's a committable offer or let's see where things stand in six months. Most people don't even understand recruiting or how it works. Trolls celebrating Michigan doesn't have any recruits. It's still early. Yeah. Well, one thing, like if you like to get uh, tied up into other schools and what they think of your recruits, yeah, you're going to get into, uh, you know, some people like that. <laughs> like uh, the, the, are you rolling? Or are you trolling when it comes down to recruiting? 
I tend to just like to have fun with it. I know it's a very serious job. The people that are involved in it, uh, I respect. They uh, they remind me of detectives. The work they have to do, and they're out, they're on the phones at all times and working their sources. I mean, I I have respect for the game of uh, for the the folks that are involved in doing it for a living. I look at it uh, from an entertainment standpoint. Uh, I mostly look away from what any of uh, a rival is going to say, but you know, sometimes when it comes down to what a rival might say about you, you know, they do pick while well, they tend to go overboard. They completely keep hitting that spot. Bam, 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 bam. Um, there usually is a, a little bit of, of truth in what they are saying. So uh, I was talking to a friend of mine today. I haven't talked with him in months. He is a big state fan. At one point we were just talking about the, uh, some of the uh, different places we are going to be on September 2nd, 3rd and 4th. And if we are going to run into each other, uh, he did say, is Michigan going to be involved in name, image and likeness? He just threw that out there because he knows that that right there is a little bit of a stinging point or not a stinging point. It is a, a point of contention still, although there's a lot of good news, a lot of good feeling about uh, name, image and likeness, likeness when it comes down to Michigan, of course, rivals, are still looking at it. So there's Link. One thing I can tell you for sure about Link, I looked at his Twitter page, and he's a smart one. Maybe he would have been able to get into Michigan without being a football player. I don't know what his uh, his test scores are, but if you go 4.22 GPA, I don't know how you, you get – Above a 4.0, obviously you can. That's not something that's new. People do it. My wife is taking some uh, post-grad classes, and she was like, uh, I got a 135 out of a 125. I'm like, I don't know. How does that even happen? Why don't they just say 135 out of 135? No. You can get extra credit. But, yeah, Link, 4.22 GPA. Nice job. He's a smart one. And Michigan got a good one. Okay, on to while we are hyping it, and there's two bits of hype that I want to get to. And believe me, this is hype. Jaden Davis was in over the weekend at the barbecue. I've got a picture of Davis. I don't know if that's his family. That's what I'm guessing. Maybe some teammates. That is Jim Harbaugh's office. Never been in Jim Harbaugh's office. I've seen a lot of pictures of it, but there it is. And I'm just going to tell you this. You should be signed up to the Maze and Blue Review. Josh Henschke, our publisher, he all week and long, like many of the others, that uh, work for Maze and Blue Review were commenting in on the barbecue and the different players and intelligence that they were picking up from sources that they were working. At one point yesterday, Josh Henschke said he felt like that Michigan's in with um, Davis. He put it at 85%. Now, look, that's... uh, I would say that if you're a Michigan fan, you got to feel pretty good. An 85% chance, and he didn't say it was an 85% chance, and however he deemed it, that's how he felt about Michigan. He put it at 85% that Davis is going to end up in Ann Arbor. I am coming away thinking that is supreme, excellent news if you're a Michigan fan. Now, what does happen, I'm not, there's nothing against Josh or who he was talking with, or I I don't know if he was talking uh, with somebody uh, that is attached to Michigan or somebody that was attached to Davis. I mean, those are two different things. You're talking to somebody. But the one thing is, is that, and this happens, and again, it's not a knock on Josh. It probably happens to everyone. When a guy is in and on campus, you know, there tends to be an incredible amount of optimism (laughs) surrounding the player.
that, that almost goes without saying. But 85% sounds pretty damn good to me. Him being on campus or anything else. I would, uh, some of it goes without saying. It is pretty obvious that this is one that's worth monitoring. And that this one, the hype train, could be absolutely out of control. Five-star quarterback. Michigan doesn't land a lot of five stars. We've been talking about the different ones. Uh, uh, Back in the day, Drew Henson, you think about that 99, 1998. But he had been a 97 recruit, and then because he played in 98, 99, 2000, you know, so. And then after that, there was uh, Ryan Mallett who ended up going to Arkansas, transferring, and then they get drafted by the Patriots. I don't remember exactly how that played out. This will be one of the highest rated commitments if Michigan is able to get Jaden Davis of uh, all time. Let's see. CJ wanted to weigh in on the hype train that is Jaden Davis that I am all aboard on. CJ Wolverine says that's Davis's. Second visit to Ann Arbor, and he said he's coming back for a game. Well, CJ, come on. Michigan is in great position. I, the things that I would say, if there's anything to worry about or, or 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 what am I looking at, when you are somebody like Davis, Georgia is still coming after Jaden Davis. There is um, the 24 quarterbacks. When you look, Ohio State has one of them. Is that Riola? I think his name is C.J. Carr. Of course, we know, went and pledged to Notre Dame. There is another quarterback from California who's ranked in the top five right there with Jaden Davis. He is interested in Georgia as well. His name is Sayan. Julian Sayan? Justin Julian Sayan. That I think Michigan also uh was interested in may still have some interest in but they they sure seem like they have zeroed in on Jaden Davis if Sayan would go to Georgia it's at least something to keep an eye on where Sayan ends up committing just saying Yakov on the recruiting of Jaden Davis, the best way to get commitments from five-star quarterbacks is by putting out first-round quarterbacks. The big house and the business school aren't the answer. Well, if you're just going to go on that, and I think there's some truth there, if you said the same thing about running backs and water, you'd be in trouble if you're Michigan if it's just about, you know, the guys that you're putting into the NFL. So there is that part. So, I don't know. That is a component of it, uh, and it's different for every kid. You know, sometimes school is an important component. Uh, you know, the weather can be something. Uniforms. I mean, there's all kinds of different things. You don't know uh, the, the the different uh, variables when it comes down to the NIL can be an important uh, factor. Although, if you, and you probably, like I am encouraging you to check out Maze and Blue Review, uh, and I, you know, and I don't know, a guy could say that name, image, and likeness and, and the money is not, you know, a factor. Usually money is a factor, you know, so <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Yakov uh, is a very unique position, situational. Yeah, for sure. Playing time. It's also one of these things like, you know, I, I could sit here. Well, let's do it. Why wouldn't you want to come and play for Jim Harbaugh? The guy played at Michigan, was a highly thought of uh, quarterback, All-American, drafted uh, in in the NFL draft, played quarterback for uh, a long time in the NFL, various stops, went to the college game. Andrew Luck was uh, his quarterback, went to the pros, and Colin Kaepernick in his first year took him to a Super Bowl. Now, those are... Right now, what we're sitting at 
uh, can we add if we're I guess if we're building a resume saying, well, you want to put anything? In? <laughs> well, he's been at Michigan on there. Yeah, let's go ahead and put last year. You know, winning the Big Ten championship with Cade McNamara. You know, let's let's put let's put that down as a as a positive on the resume. The negative part, you would go to, you would say, doesn't have quarterbacks that have been drafted in the NFL. You could name the you know from from year one uh, all the way through, uh, from, you know, from Rudock, uh, you, you, you go down the list and, and talk about the quarterbacks that he has uh, and where they have been drafted. And, and you would say that would be, that would be the negative. Spate, Milton, some of the transfers they put in there and, uh, and there you are. So, you know, how that plays. I, you know, I, I still think it's a uh, a positive overall. Harbaugh's quarterback resume and coaching and playing days can, and where the negatives are at. I think that the resume is still a positive one uh, for Michigan. Uh, all right, that's not. We've got one more train coming down the tracks. And it's in basketball. Isaiah Collier. For those that like rankings, he is a five-star. Bonafide five-star. And he is ranked as the number four overall player in 23. Overall, number four. He is a point guard at six foot four. I watched uh, a some video of him over the weekend of Collier. He does have the nickname of the wizard. He said he thought that nickname was okay. His nickname that he likes is Zay. I'm guessing from Isaiah Zay. Zay Collier. When I watched the five minutes of uh, the first video that came up, he reminded me of uh, Anthony Edwards from the Timberwolves. Same height, same build. Give him the ball and just let him go. I mean, that's what he was doing in these videos. Uh, and you say, well, is he a, a skinny guy at, you know, six foot four as a point guard? I put the pictures up just for this weekend of Zay Collier. And the answer to the physical part is that he looks like he has an NBA body already. Forget having a Big Ten body. Physically, as a point guard, he is uh, all that. So you don't have to worry about that. And I also thought when I saw some of the video that he attacked, sized guys up like Tyrese Maxey, who plays for the 76ers. But Maxey's listed at 6'2". Collier's bigger than Tyrese Maxey. But, yeah, you want to know how you get to be ranked as one of the top five players as a point guard? You could just do everything, and you watch the video of him, and he does. He's he's a man among boys. Uh, you know, he you know everything is awesome. I was watching just some individual v- drill work, and it's like, you know, this guy's got an this is a complete game changer. All of that. Now, you say all that, and you say, hey, you know, uh, Caleb Houston was a top ten recruit last year. Fair enough. <laughs> you know, this guy's top four. So yeah, they don't always hit, and they're not always incredible, but uh, you know. When you do talk about five stars, you, you think about program changers and superstars, and you do get excited about that. And what comes along with recruiting rankings is hype, and we all know that. And Collier is going to make a decision soon. And it sounds like Michigan and USC, maybe UCLA, and who's the other? Cincinnati. Those are the four schools. But Michigan is right there in the mix. And he has said, he was said, sorry, he said that he was going to make a decision before he came into Ann Arbor. And it sounds like he is still going to make a decision here pretty quick. What does that mean by the end of August? I don't know. Pretty quick could mean today. He uh, would be great. You know, the kid, I would say, obviously. Now, 
I, I was complaining myself about five stars and how they're gone, you know, but after the first TV timeout of the first game and they're not around very often, but you know, you, the idea of still being able to potentially get uh, superstars and then mixing them in with uh, a veteran team. Would I rather have a nice mix of uh, veterans and a, uh, a superstar five, you know, star point guard, or would I like to have, you know, five, the top five, you know, five stars, I would take the mixture of players. But he um, is somebody that Michigan has a, I don't know, you want to put it a good chance. I'm, I'm going to say great. I'm going to say Michigan has a good chance at landing. And then I'm just going to go back to the name, image, and likeness for just one second. Because there has been a lot that has been said about Michigan about name, image, and likeness. If they are able to land Jaden Davis and or Isaiah Collier, that would be a uh, a huge NLI statement by Michigan. Now, sure, you might have one guy that doesn't care about a million dollars up front and say, hey, he's thinking about uh, education and, you know, fit, you know, those all the other things besides money. And let's just say that's Jaden Davis. You say, wow, okay, uh, he, Michigan got a, a one-off. I, it, I don't know. Like, it still seems like it would be an incredible statement considering uh, the kind of money, whether it's a million, two million, three million, four million, five million dollars that these players are uh, potentially getting. And if you could say, yeah, okay, I'm, I'm you know, school is what I'm going to be about. Great. And then with basketball, and especially a five-star player, most five stars are gone after year one. There are it's more of the, especially with the guarantees. Now, look, Caleb Houston had a did not have the kind of season that he wanted to have at Michigan, and he was still able to get guaranteed money where he was picked in the second round. So most guys are gonna go. So to go to a place like Michigan without the guaranteed money up front, that is also a huge statement. So We'll see. Neither of these guys have committed yet. Neither obviously have signed. Uh, the Collier would be for uh, for 23. You know, Jaden Davis would be for 24. But Jaden Davis, if he would be able to sign and knowing that quarterbacks and what he would be able to do out on the recruiting trail for Michigan, it would be huge. And then, um, you know, Collier, just as I said, because of basketball and all of that. So there you go. I appreciate everybody getting in tomorrow. We will take your uh, predictions on things that you think they're going to happen with the Michigan football team. Uh, thanks for joining us. We are here uh, every day at one o'clock weekdays. Want to remind you that you can get access to premium content for free until the season opener. Use that code U of M free 22 at checkout. You can see what everybody had to say about everything that's going on with the barbecue. I just scratched the surface, probably another 10 names. I could sit here and and talk about, but you want to know what Michigan's next move is? Join the Maze and Blue Review today. Go to michigan.rivals.com. I have set a record today for the longest that I've ever been on this YouTube. I appreciate everybody. I'm looking in. Paul was there. Uh, He's fired up on uh, Clubhouse. Everybody else uh, for joining us around wherever uh, you're getting in. Take care, and we will talk to you. Uh, Moses wants a shout out. Hello, Moses. Moses Malone. That's it. Uh, Rest in peace. The great Bill Russell, who passed away over the weekend. Uh, We will uh, be back tomorrow at 1 o'clock.